Hi guys, how are you doing? Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm also live on, um, I'm also live on, uh, TikTok. That's right. So y'all can check me out on TikTok. I did promise I was going to give you four sermons a week. A week's gone halfway or almost halfway. And this is my first sermon. All right, guys, how are you doing? Um, the title of this sermon is The Worship of Man. Let us start with a prayer. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to gather before you. I thank you for your love, your loving kindness. I thank you for your mercy, your forgiveness. I thank you for your peace and your direction. I ask, Father, that you continue to dwell in us, surrounding us in your grace, immersing us in your love. In Yahushua's name I pray, amen. I was watching um, a video today, and in this particular video, we had a quote-unquote man of God from some part of um, the Wari area attack another big, very big man of God who laid curses on Yahoo boys. And I watched how apostles, I watched how preachers and pastors used heavy words on each other. And although I cannot say I'm 100% in approval of the way they were addressing each other or the way the other guy addressed the Potakot um, pastor, the Potakot pastor has also been known for, for talking offhandedly in um, a rather... Uh, should I say, rude manner. But you see, what brought me joy in that was the fact that people are beginning to question these men. People are beginning to ask questions. People are beginning to raise issues. Someone said the pastor is from Benin. You see, there was a time in Nigeria where no one dared as much as even question a sermon coming from a pulpit. There were people who would believe that that could actually bring all sorts of misfortunes, even to the point of life loss, forgetting that Christ himself did not live beyond 33. Death is not a sign that God isn't with you. In as much as long life is not a sign that God is with you. We got this all twisted. And you see, I was so happy because I remember what I went through when I started this movement. Many of you don't have an idea what I was put through to start this particular movement. I went through the highest level of threats to my life, my property, my person, Friends left me, celebrities unfollowed me simply because I dared question these people. Someone said, oh, got sacked at Cool FM. I, luckily, I didn't get sacked at Cool FM. supported me um, throughout my stay there. Almost got sacked. Oh, yes, almost. There was a point where I almost lost my job at Cool FM back then when I was still with Cool FM. And death is not a sign that God is, is not with you. Remember the thief on the cross 
He still died, but Christ promised him eternal life. Death did not mean that Christ was not with him. Those who were alive were not guaranteed eternal life, but a man who was dying was guaranteed eternal life. The man didn't ask for healing. Ah, Christ, heal us of our bruises. Save us. The one who, sa who asked to be saved was the one who lost his life here and in the hereafter. Many people, because of our pagan mindset, we believe that death is punishment. We believe that death is, is victory for the enemy. Let me tell you, death is better than many things. May you not live a useless life to the point where you beg for death. The people who are so sick now, they have money, they have life, they're begging for death. May you not taste that. Because you think, oh, death. You see, when you value, the scriptures say, wherever your heart is, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart would be. If your treasure is all stacked up in this world, you would see death as a bad thing. Something trying to separate you from your treasure. But that's not what Christ taught us. And you see, the preachers that you have, have over the years, please, nobody should try to call me. Nobody should try to call me now. The preachers that you have, have over the years infused their doctrine into the scriptural teachings of Yahushua and his disciples and they have turned bad to good and good to bad i want to read a scripture for you I want to read a scripture for you. I didn't plan to use it, but I'm going to use it anyway. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. I'm reading from the New International Version. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them. Accursed are those who will tell you that your enemy is trying to kill you. Make death look like it's a bad thing. Forgetting that we're all going to die. Big or small, strong or weak, tiny or great, it's going to come to all. Long life was not promised to anyone. Paul probably lived till he was about 60, thereabout, with all the anointing, with everything. Why didn't he live to be 105? Or like Methuselah, why didn't he live to be 969? You see, I was watching Sadhguru. I just stumbled upon one of his posts. And Sadhguru says, spoke something about our foolishness. You see, when you put a God stamp on your stupidity, it becomes a lifelong bondage. When you're dumb enough to believe that by paying tithe, you will attract riches, you have put a lifelong stamp on your stupidity. You've divinely sealed your foolishness. Because ask yourself, Forbes, result, Forbes report comes out every year. Where are all the tithers? Nigeria has three billionaires. Out of the three, two are Muslim. One, Mike Adenuga, is not Pentecostal. Doesn't pay tithe. They all are very territorial. Oh, they give so much to charity. 
simply don't tithe. Where are all the tithers? Where are all the seed sowers? Where are all the dangerous church givers? Because your pastors have sealed their stupidity with a God stamp. You fail to question it because you are afraid of God. You see, it's not your fault. It's the transference of the godly status of God to a mere mortal who the only thing that he has, the only power that he has over you is the fact that he's richer than you. Let me tell you, there is no Nigerian Jew. I say this all the time. There is no Nigerian Jew that is more anointed than me. At the height of my rebellion, I used to tell them that they should all gather, that they should pray for me, pray that something bad should happen to me, that I will sleep in their middle. They should just give me coke and something to be eaten. And every four or five hours, they should allow me to go out and use the bathroom and come back. And they should, but they should not touch me. If they want to touch, they can touch my leg. They should not touch my head. So that they will not give me a headache. If they want to touch my head, I will allow them. But then they not knock my head out or say, he's not answering or saying, uh. I used to say it now. They should all gather. I will give, just give me iPad. Let me just be on iPad. Give me AirPods. Let me be listening to my music. Any prayer they want to pray, let them pray. Any fast they want to fast. Let, any incantation they want to incant, let them incant. Any tongue they want to tongue, let them tongue. I dared them. Anybody who followed us in the free nation those days, I used to dare them. That anointing that you have, I dare you to use it on me. Instead, they were using law and uh, calling my office to sack me. And as they are the power of the anointing, let me tell you, they are wealthier and more powerful than I am. So they can call agencies and tell him, don't give. There was a, I don't want to mention the network, the telecom company. I used to do a lot of jingles for them. They called me and said, they were specifically told not to use daddy freeze plus the ones they sent there was a time a church i attended for nearly 10 20 years i forgot how long i was in that church that i used to pay tithes to they withdrew their jingles from cool fm just to spite me so that it would look like cool fm was losing revenue for having daddy freeze and it affected me then. I was just, it was just, I was just blessed by God. I know what I went through. That's where their power reach. But say that they go pray to me, say something will do me. They're not born them well. If anything go happen to me, now say God don't talk, say ready. If not, year in, year out, that time I they cost. And they cost, no, no be, no be now where they talk to them maturely. That time I they cost them like small children. You see, I did not put a God stamp on their stupidity. They have, they, there were people, there was one guy, let me tell you, was telling people that, ah, he's one of the pastors I've mentioned today, but I'm not going to go into it. He's not alive anymore. These are the kind of people that wanted me gone because I dared talk to their papas. Me and him now, who did God? But you see, the fact that he's dead does not mean that God does not love him. I'm not like them. I don't have a stupid, a, a, a God stamp on my stupidity. I do not stamp God on my foolishness. Let me tell you, since I stopped paying tight, ask taste boards. Taste boards it knows my finances. The kind of money I started making. I did not make it when I was a tighter. But guess what? It had nothing to do with the fact that I was a tighter or was not a tighter. And it had everything to do with the fact that I had created a value system. I had clients. I had work. And I was diligently doing it. It had nothing to do with the fact that I... But let me tell you, if I were them, because I have stamped God on my stupidity, I will come and say, because I stopped tithing, oh, God has blessed me with this new car. Let me tell you, as a tither, I could not buy a 2020 luxury car in 2020. As a tither, I could not do it. But that does not mean that 
because I stopped tithing, God started blessing me. No. Paying tight does not bring blessing. It does not, it does not bring financial blessing. And it does not take financial blessing. Paying tight has nothing to do with Christianity. It's an old expired law. You put yourself under it. You bring the curse of the whole old law. As Nehemiah chapter 10 clearly explains it. I don't want to go into it today. But the presence or the absence of tithing does not affect your finances. But you believe it does because you have put a God stamp on the stupidity of your pastor that told you so. I have challenged those pastors. Come on, this thing you are talking about, come and defend it in a debate. They're not born them. You want to come and tell me that tithing is part of Christianity? What part of the Bible do you want to read? Or you want to join Quran to it to defend yourself? It is your ideology. And then when you now say you cannot make heaven unless you tithe, you are now dragging God into your foolishness. And then you are putting a stamp of God that God said you will not, then you are stamping God on foolishness. And people, because they hear God and they are afraid, they begin to practice foolishness as religion. Look at Nigeria. Five to ten churches on every street, yet we are not better than pagan nations. Nations that have no God, that don't practice any God, when you get there, you see love. Their politicians don't steal. Yahoo boys don't Yahoo. You drop your phone in the toilet, you go and come back, you still see your phone there. Zero ritual killings. They have a few psychopaths here and there. The people that... Let me tell you. Someone that will cut your head abroad. Now confirm psycho. You know well. Is that a sociopath or a psycho? Get mental condition where they worry. I mean, not they okay. Nigerian man. Person way in brain. Correct. No man person like me and you. Go they look for human head to take make money. That's the sad one. You see a... a, a, a someone who has a... A... a mental malady. Is excused. He's not well. He doesn't think like a normal person. You, that you want to use it to make money, you are well. You are just greedy. Greed is not a sickness. You can go to you can go to court and somebody that did horrible things even to children. If psych psychiatrists come and say he's not mentally okay, they can't reduce his sentence. They can't reduce us and say, George, I'm, I'm suffering from greed. It was greed. I am suffering from greed. The greed is very strong. Greed no be sickness. Amen? Now, how do we avoid putting a God stamp on personal stupidity? How do we avoid putting God a God stamp by demystifying those who call themselves men of God. They are not gods. They do not have superior anointing to you. If they have the power of healing, the gift of healing, if God gave them the gift of healing or the gift of prophecy, it does not mean that they're superior to you because if you are in the church, you should have a gift too. You should be able to sing. You should be able to preach or teach like I do. You should be able to speak in tongues. There's a gift for everyone. Together we form the church. You can't have a human being with seven hearts and no lungs. He can't function. You can't have a human being with two hearts, three lungs, 17 kidneys and no intestine. It can't work. There has to be a bit of everything. There has to be intestine. There has to be liver. There has to be gallbladder. There has to be stomach. There has to be lungs. Or there have to be lungs. There, there has to be a heart. There has to be a brain. Without these things, the human body cannot be complete. What your, the system your pastors are creating is like a human being with 10 brains and no intestine, no lungs, and no heart. Or 17 hearts, no brain, no spinal cord, no lungs, and no intestines. That's not a human being. That's a specimen. Are you with me, people? 
Let me tell you something. You're not the first set of people who are fooled by the power of other people to put a God stamp on human beings or human reasoning. Go with me to the scriptures. Acts chapter 14. I want us to read from verse 8. When a mob of Gentiles and Jews, along with their leaders, decided to attack and stone them, when the apostles learned of it, they fled to the region of Lyconia, to the town of Lystra and Derby and the surrounding areas, and there they preached the good news. While they were at Lystra, Paul and Barnabas came upon a man with crippled feet. He had been that way from birth, so he had never walked. He was sitting and listening as Paul preached. Looking straight at him, Paul realized he had faith to be healed. So Paul called to him in a loud voice, stand up. And the man jumped to his feet and started walking. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in their local dialect, these men are gods in human form. They decided that Barnabas was the Greek god Zeus and Paul was Hermes, since he was the chief speaker. Now the temple of Zeus was located just outside the town, so the priests of the temple and the crowd brought bulls and writs of flowers to the town gate, and they prepared to offer sacrifices to the apostles. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of what was happening, they tore their clothes in dismay and ran out among the people, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We are merely human beings just like you. We have come to bring you the good news. I should turn away from these worthless things and turn to the living God who made heaven and earth, sea and everything in them. In the past, he permitted all nations to go their ways, but he never left them without evidence of himself and his goodness. For instance, he sent you the rain and the good cops, crops and gives you food and joyful hearts. But even with these words, Paul and Barnabas could scarcely, scarcely restrain the people from sacrificing to them. You see, what happened was Paul and Barnabas had a miracle. A real miracle. Not a choreographed miracle. A proper miracle. And the moment everybody saw the miracle, they began to worship them, not even as men of God, as gods. You might not realize it, but that's what Christianity has become. Your men of God have become gods. And just the way they were sacrificing to Paul and Barnabas is the same way they are sacrificing to them. I'll tell you a story. Um, I was invited uh to an event by uh, a church they were launching i think a school or something back then and as a young reporter back then i was there and the geo himself was there so he had a brief meeting with the reporters and as we were leaving he was standing at the door very humbly shaking our hands as we're going and do you know i shook the geo you know I yeah, know that time I was a Christian, but I did not believe it was anything. I, I just was a bit worried that why was the crowd downstairs so much? As I was shaking the Jew, thank you, sir. Thank you. He was shaking all of us one by one. We're shaking and we're going. By the time I got downstairs, they nearly tore my hand away. They wanted to rub the anointing from my hand. The people downstairs. You know, the, the event was up there, so we're descending the stairs. There was security everywhere. And as I got downstairs, so they were grabbing my hand. Luckily, it's still on my right hand, therefore, tip my watch. Ha! Ah, let me collect some anointing. They were now rubbing my hand to collect the anointing of the Jew. That was not anointing. That was a very annoying thing. How did we get here? By putting a God stamp on our stupidity.
Look at someone beside you and tell them this evening, don't put a God stamp on your buffoonery. On your tomfoolery, don't put a God stamp on your idiocy. Don't put a God stamp on your ignorance. It's not, I'm not joking. No. Ah, let me tap the anointing. Let me tap the anointing. Oh, let me tap the anointing. Ah, daddy, 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 Joe has touched him. Daddy, Joe has touched him. Even our driver that followed us there, they collected anointing of Joe from driver hand. We got to our car, we were like, hey, 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 but I don't just see you. So I want to end with a prayer. This is my first sermon for the week. And as you're going, say these words to yourself. Or ask yourself, have I ever put a God stamp on my stupidity? Just think about it. Ask yourself, have I? What's the stupid thing I do that I endorse it in God? For some of you, is paying 10% of your monthly salary and believing God will bless you for it because you do it diligently. Some of you, is because you speak in nonsense tongues that have no sense. Robo, skiriba, rambara, skorubo. Is that how they tell you speaking? Go and read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. If you read verse 27, Paul says, let's summarize. If they are speaking in tongues, there must be an interpreter. Don't put a God stamp on your stupidity. Your pastors actually teach you how to speak. So open your mouth and let the Holy Spirit lead you. Say, Raskarabiskorobo, Horagadaba Gudubu, Hingarastatatata, Purukuchuchu, Hingiri Bigiri Bigiri Bogoro Bogoro Bogoro. Is that the language of angels? You have put a God stamp on your, on your pastor's stupidity. Wake up, all of you. I want to end with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us the opportunity to gather in your word, in under the umbrella of your grace. I ask for forgiveness for all of us if we've ever put your stamp, endorsed in your name, our misunderstanding, misrepresentation, ignorance, or utter foolishness. Heal us, Father, from our own folly. Empty us so we can be filled with you. In Yahushua's name, I pray. Amen. Take care. God bless. I'll be back later in the evening. We have a political topic we'll be talking about. Uh, but that's my sermon for the day. Don't put a God stamp on your foolishness. Take care. <laughs>